We've all had that experience. You open a website, you're scrolling around. Oh, pop up. Let me just close that. Okay, good. Can't close the pop up. Okay, forget it. Oh, can't go back either. Forget it, forget it, forget it. You, my friend, have just found a conversion blocker. Just like forgetting to wear clothes to your wedding, conversion blockers cause misery and sadness for you and your visitors. But unlike forgetting to wear clothes to your wedding, this video is gonna show you how to find and remove that misery and sadness. Okay, first up, what is a conversion blocker? Well, a conversion is when someone lands on your website and does the thing you want them to do. So buys a product, submits a form, becomes a lead for you, takes the action that you want them to take. And a conversion blocker is something that gets in their way of doing that thing. Now, for the purpose of this video, we can broadly break conversion blockers into two categories. Firstly, we have technical conversion blockers. So these are things like broken bits of code, buttons and links that don't work, forms that don't submit, checkout processes that are broken. Basically, something to do with the technical implementation of your website. Then we have content or information conversion blockers. So these might be little pieces of information that your visitors don't get, so aren't able to make the decision to convert with you. For example, you're not telling them about your delivery terms. They don't know which areas you serve, that type of thing. We're going to have a look at how to find both of them. I also want to say before we start that conversion blockers can range in severity from minor niggles that might stop people from converting if they're right on the edge to major conversion destroyers like checkouts not working, forms not loading on particular devices, pages not loading, really slow page speed, that type of thing. Now the process we're going to go through is a three-step one because everyone loves a three-step process. The first step is working out if you have a conversion blocker. So I'm going to give you some of the signs to look for that tell you that you might have a conversion blocker on your website. Next is identifying where that conversion blocker exists, the specific page that that thing is happening. And then the third thing that you need to do is identify exactly what the conversion blocker is. So we're going to look at each of these stages in turn, starting with identifying if you have a conversion blocker. Now we're gonna be using Google Analytics as our main conversion blocker red flagger. There are other tools that you can use and other methods that you can use as well, but we're gonna be using Google Analytics today because that's the tool that most people have at their disposal. Obviously a really serious conversion destroying blocker is gonna be very obvious. You're gonna log onto your site one day, realize that you've got no conversions at all. That's gonna be fairly clear. But for conversion blockers that are a little bit more subtle, let's have a look at some of the key metrics that you might use to identify that there could be an issue on your site. <laughs> For example, here we are on an e-commerce site and what we can see from this is the landing page that visitors are coming onto the site through. Now, if this all looks a bit horrendous for you, let me just point out some key stats. Firstly, the number of sessions. This is basically the number of visits to this page as the first page on the website, okay? So someone comes in from any sort of traffic channel. They might come in from search or social or they might come in direct. We're looking at the first page that people land on. So that's this first column. The column I'm most interested in from a conversion blocking perspective is the e-commerce conversion rate. This is the percentage of people that buy having landed on this page first. And what we can see from this data is something quite interesting. This first page, which is the home page on the site, has a 5.14% conversion rate, meaning someone who comes onto this site through this page has a one in 20 chance of turning into a purchaser. If we compare that to this page, which is a product page on the website, so this is a page listing a particular product, we can see the conversion rate of this page is two 2.72%. Around about 1 in 40 of the visitors to this page is going to buy. If, however, we contrast it with these two pages here, both of these also uh, product pages, but we can see their conversion rates are much lower. For example, this page has a conversion rate of 0.39%. This page has a conversion rate of 0%. Now that tells us something about these two pages isn't working because clearly the site process is working. People are coming onto the site and they're turning into customers, but there's something about these product pages which is turning visitors off. So potential conversion blocker alert. Now it's not as simple as saying there's a conversion blocker on this page, you need to understand the traffic source that's driving people to this website. For example, if people are coming onto this site looking for pictures of Kylie Jenner, they're going to be disappointed because this is a B2B <laughs> e-com site. Now, this site has a very different problem. Here we can see the different traffic channels that are driving traffic to this site. We can see that paid search is the top performing channel. We have social, which happens to be social ads as the next performing channel. There's one thing that all of the traffic channels have in common. In fact, there are two things that all of the traffic channels have in common 
common for this particular site that is a high bounce rate meaning the people that are landing on these pages are almost immediately leaving they're not taking any action and also crucially a low e-commerce conversion rate i.e they are not buying so this is an example of a site that might have a site-wide conversion blocker because nobody is able to convert so mission critical for a site like this is to identify what's stopping people from buying because even with 1500 visits over the course of this period of time you would have expected some sales if you have it set up in your google analytics account you can also use shopping behavior analysis which will show you the different checkout steps on your website and the number of people that drop out at each one so if you're an e-commerce business this can be very useful so and by the way if you're not an e-commerce site i.e your website is here to generate leads you can use exactly the same metrics to understand if you have a conversion blocker so looking at the primary landing pages on your site having a look to see what sort of percentage of traffic is converting through them and also looking at different traffic channels to see if you have a site-wide conversion blocking problem in the most extreme examples of conversion blockers if you have live chat on your website you will actually get people complaining i can't do this this is really annoying just another reason why you might want to have live chat on your site okay so we think we may have an issue conversion rate is really low or bounce rate is really high we've noticed that there are particular landing pages on our site which are underperforming now it's time to identify exactly where that conversion blocker is now the first suggestion i'm going to make here is actually nothing technical at all and that is to have you your friends and your work colleagues people in the office use your website as if they were a customer go through and try to do the thing that you're expecting your customers to do on your site this isn't a particularly technical solution but guess what it can often be the fastest way to identify conversion blockers now a couple of things i'd suggest here firstly don't just test your website on the device and the browser that you're always testing it on sometimes you'll find that you're actually looking at a cached version of your site and the version that everyone else is seeing has this conversion blocker in place so try Try testing it in a private browsing mode. Try clearing all your cache, clearing your cookies. Try testing it on different devices. You can even call up that friend who's still got an iPhone 4S and bangs on about it as if it's some kind of Luddite claim to fame. Get them to use it as well. If your website works on a 4S, it's gonna work on anything. If you're an e-commerce business, you might wanna set up a 100% voucher code that you can give to people that are testing your site so they can follow your sales process all the way through to checkout completion. Now, if you don't already have live chat installed on your site, it can be a good idea to get it installed so that if people are having a problem they can let you know particularly during your checkout process if you notice that people are lingering through your checkout process you can have a little pop-up that says hey just wanted to check that you've got everything that you need remember the golden rule with live chat for every one person that tells you there's an issue there's at least 20 to 50 who haven't told you that there's an issue so don't dismiss the odd objection over live chat get to the bottom of it find out what's causing that issue so if you still haven't found the exact location of your conversion blocker based on the data from your Google Analytics and yours, your colleagues and your family and friends using the site, then you might want to try user testing. Watching the general public use your website will be an epiphany. It'll be epiphanating, epiphanizing epiphanation. It'll be amazing. And it may also damage your faith in humanity. Now, if you still haven't found the location of your conversion blocker, fear not. We can use a couple of tools in step three to get to the bottom of exactly what is stopping conversions on your site. If your friends, colleagues, and family haven't helped you find the location of your conversion blocker, then there may be nothing else for it. We may just have to recruit the general public. Apparently no one was hurt. There's a few different ways to recruit the general public. A couple of tools that we love using. Firstly, Hotjar. Now Hotjar is a heat mapping software that allows you to see how people are using your page. There's a couple of really useful tools that allow you to diagnose using Hotjar where your site might be leaking conversions. The first is click mapping. This will show you where people are clicking on your page. Really useful. You'll be amazed to see how people are clicking on headlines. They're clicking on things that aren't a button. They're falling down holes they're clicking on your logo more than you could possibly imagine it's really interesting to see how the general public are using your site and often the things that you want them to click on aren't being clicked on so that can mean re-looking at how you're positioning the information on your page or how you are using the kind of hierarchy and layout on your page to force people into the areas that you want them to go now a really key conversion blocker can be requiring people to understand information before converting on your site but not giving them that information in time 
home. Let me show you an example. Now on this page, the scroll depth shows us that fewer than 50% of people get to this point on the website. The main call to action button, the thing that we want people to do is above the fold here. Now some sites require people to know information from below the fold before they are ready to convert. So you can see the issue there. We're asking people to take an action, but half of them aren't even getting to the information that they need in order to take that action. Now it's not necessarily a bad thing to have a short scroll depth if you've got a really descriptive clear call to action and people just stay on your page and immediately convert that's great too but having a low scroll depth with a low conversion rate can be an indication that something is stopping them from scrolling down that page i.e it's boring it doesn't do the job it needs to or you're not actually signposting that there is information below the page hotjar will also allow you to record your users sessions so you can actually see them moving around on your website and using your site now obviously you've got to watch each of these one by one so you're hoping that people fall down the particular conversion blocker but if you've got time to chomp through a whole bunch of them it can be a great way to get an understanding of how people are using your page the next tool that you might want to use to identify the specific conversion holes that people are falling down is user testing so you can go to a site like userbrain or usertesting.com and fill in some info about what you want people to do on your site you will then recruit people that are going to test your site and record their thoughts as they're going through so it's a great idea to set them little challenges like imagine that you were this type of person and you wanted to buy an X what would you do and then they will talk through the process as they're going through your site the one thing to be careful of with user testing is quite often the testers actually want to please you or want to please the platform so they can sometimes be a little bit artificially kind so what we tend to do would be to ask them questions like what would stop them from using your site what would stop them from buying you what would make them choose a competitor instead of you because that might give us the information that we really need to identify this is a problem. Okay, so you've looked through your analytics, you've identified that you've got a conversion blocker, you've found the page that it's on, you've used user testing, your colleagues, your family, your friend with the iPhone 4S to identify what the conversion blocker is and you've fixed it. What can you do in the future to make sure that if this thing reoccurs or other conversion blockers reoccur, you are notified quickly? Well, glad I asked. Aside from leaving live chat on your site and letting your team know that if they spot any website issues at all to let you know immediately, the other thing that you can do is inside Google Analytics, you can do is set up alerts at the bottom and then in the final column underneath view, then you can click on custom alerts. What you can do here is set up an alert that pings you if conversion rate, for example, goes underneath a particular threshold. So let's say, for example, we wanted to make a conversion rate, which was conversion blocker alert. It tells us within a day if our conversion rate dips below a particular conversion rate that we know is fairly average for our site. So you can save this alert and what will happen is Google Analytics will email you if your conversion rate falls below a particular number. Now you can segment this down even further for example to set up an alert if traffic through a particular landing page is converting less than a certain number. Now the important thing to know is Google Analytics is only going to tell you this with a day's delay. So if you're driving a lot of traffic, you need to be more on it than this. And obviously you're gonna be running checks on a daily basis. But if your site's relatively low traffic, then having alerts set up like this can just help notify you that something might be up. The other thing that you can do to identify conversion blockers is request a free website and digital marketing review from Exposure Ninja. You were wondering how I was gonna slip that in there, weren't you? If you're a regular viewer, you saw that coming a mile off. If you need some help with your digital marketing and you wanna increase the leads and sales that your website generates, then, then our agency, Exposure Ninja, offers a free free service that will help you to do this. It's really simple and really useful. All you need to do is go to ExposureNinja.com and click the big button to request your free website and marketing review. You'll need to fill in a short questionnaire that asks about your business and your goals for the next 12 months. Our team will then analyze your website, they'll analyze your competitors, they'll analyze the digital marketing that you've been doing, and they will map you out a set of digital marketing priorities to get you to your goals over the next 12 months. They'll record all of this in a 15 minute video, which they'll send over to you by email, usually within a couple of days. It's awesome and it's totally free. So go to ExposureNinja.com to request your review today. So I hope you've learned something today. If you haven't learned anything, I hope it's been entertaining. And if it hasn't been entertaining, then why are you still here? Don't forget to click subscribe and click the little bell notification. We create videos that are like this and sometimes better every single week. And don't forget also to check out the Exposure Ninja digital marketing podcast. Just search for Exposure Ninja podcast on your podcast listening device and enjoy. Leave a comment. Just leave a comment. Just 
tell us something. Tell us about your day. <laughs> tell us what your most frustrating conversion blocker is. And don't forget, if you haven't requested your free website and marketing review from ExposureNinja.com yet, what are you doing? Go to ExposureNinja.com, request your free review today. Until next time, see you soon.